The purpose of this video is to demonstrate how easy it is to map the outline of a challenging case with uh, CBCT. It's a plain mega software that we're using from Axis, and I'm going to be using the X7 from Edge Ender. This is just mapping of the pulp chamber floor, and I'll work, work, work you through some of exactly what I do. First of all, you can see that this is a confluent canal in the mesial root of a lower molar, lower first molar. We're just trying to get a feeling for where the confluence is and how dramatic it is. Uh, just remember that probably 50% of all your broken files break at the confluence or at this very sharp intersection curve, mesial and lingual canals where they join. Um, so the entrance to these canals can be quite abrupt coronally and then once again uh, in the mid root or sorry in this section here and um, two to three millimeters from your minor foramen very abrupt as well that's at the confluence so you'll also notice some heavy calcifications in the pulp chamber these are pulp stones and we'll show you how to remove these just mapping from the buccal cusp uh, down to the pulp chamber roof that's about six millimeters. Um, just lining up the CEJ from enamel to enamel on each side. Once again, you can see the uh, heavy calcifications in the pulp chamber. Uh, so that's about six millimeters. And then from the pulp chamber floor to the vocation is about three millimeters and a little bit over one millimeter uh, from the roof of the pulp chamber down into the floor of the pulp chamber. Um, now in the top right once again lining up the CEJ and taking the measurements to the buccal cusp um, down in the bottom left we're just measuring from the exterior surface of the root at the CEJ level uh, right around and it's one of the Rankin and Krasnow's rules of canal location that that wall uh, is equidistant uh, now, once again, we're mapping the pulp, pulp horns from the buccal cusp down to the pulp horns. These are both a little over 4.1 uh, 4 millimeters. And then the distance between them a little over 3 or 3.8, actually. So this gives us a really nice view in the live tooth view down bottom right. We can see, literally, prepping just distal to the buccal cusp uh, we're going to find our first uh, pulp horn. These measurements, measurements you must know, 6 to 1.5 and 3 um, because they're very, very uh, standardized here they are here in this tooth and it just prevents any gouging into the pulp chamber floor. Um, the choice of the uh, armamentarium to actually cut these activities is really up to you. Um, and I'm going to show you what I use shortly, but this is just mapping the exact working length of which you can do very, very easily in this Remexis software. Um, so I'm just going to start mapping from one millimeter back and I'm just following the root canal system along, which is going to give us a really good outline form up to the buccal cusp there. And there's our working length on the mesolingual and mesobuccal. Uh, and then the uh, full tooth view, you can see the outline of the root canal system proper, um, which really is satisfying because you know what you're up against. And these curves are not insignificant. Uh, so that's a four millimeter mark uh, there. This is a really nice spur to start cutting your access cavities from Comet. Actually, Comet have a wonderful range of access spurs. Um, so there's our outline form in the bottom left, uh, just removing that mesial amalgam too. Notice the distal, I should have taken a little bit of distal um, amalgam out of this prep, which I did not. Um, you know, removing the uh, these amalgams, they've probably got caries or some cracks underneath them. Right, at the 4mm mark we can start to see the uh, pulp horns. Sure enough, just a little bit over four. Now I'm going to take this down to six and I should start unrooping the pulp chamber and moving into removing those calcifications. So let's just see if that's what we see. Really sharp DG16 is wonderful for doing this kind of prep. And just scratching away just to confirm and making make sure we're on the right path. 
um, I see a detached tentacle down there that we're just going to unroot completely and remove. Some of these um, pulp stones we can easily just flick out with the DG16. Others are bound a little bit more hard to get into a bit more aggression. Once again, using the comet there, so there's an unattached pop stone. Just flicking that out. Underneath there, we can see a bump into the orifice of the Indonesia canal. So it's a bit of a bump. We can try and remove it with ultrasonics, but it's probably a bit slow. I'm just demonstrating that here. If we're going to use an ultrasonic to remove these really heavy pulp stone calcifications. Um, we do find it a bit hot, so I'm just showing you this is a slow method of doing it. We can carry on and doing and doing it this way, but make sure after five seconds you irrigate and cool down that pulp stone because it's going to get hot. Right, so there's the canal system of the mesial in there, and the pulp stone is really tight. So for the remainder of it, we're just going to use the endo tracer once again from pump. What I really like about these is the length of the shank and the thickness of the shank. So we don't bend them back a lot in the uh, months ago. So we have a nice little guard. And even the refining the box on the wall to the final form. So that whatever temporization you put into it, so that it's something else. It's not just going to collapse into the pulp tree, because you have a fun one. I'm just going to because I know it's very slow to open. Just start to get a little bit of straight line. Very nice buckle. Not so bad. Just wash it out. And it goes above the door. The way. Very good. The X7 is a wonderful file system, one of the most flexible on the market. Actually, it's only a three file system. And then you can add a glide path at your leisure if you require. I'm just working up to the confluence here on the buckle. So down we go, sliding down to the buckle. And because the confluence of buckle into the lingual isn't that uh, pronounced at the curvature, we'll actually be able to take the X7s down to full working length on both the mesi and lingual. Always use a patency file just to make sure you're not blocking out with dentin or debris. And that's what we're doing here. A nice little tip is when you get a little bit further than mid root or actually get into working length you can use an 06 size 15 into the mid root portion of the canal here i should be working through sodium hypochlorite but i just wanted to show you the debris that this file can pull up brushing towards the buckle buckle canal brush towards the buckle lingual ling brushing towards the lingual and that 06 just opens up to mid root now the 04 size 20 first in our series Look how flexible these files are. Literally, they just slide to working length and preserve that very cervical dentine just beautifully. Remember, always I should be working through a sea of hypochlorite. I just wanted to demo the um, uh, really nice ability of the files. And look here how flexible this file system is. Amazing, especially on uppers when you're working into the buckle root system. How easy it is to pre-bend those files and just slide them straight into the buckle roots. And irrigate, irrigate, irrigate. Uh, sodium hypochlorite 3%, size 30 in the distal root, and size 30 in the mesial, mesobuckle, and mesial lingua. And these just slide right around that curvature in both the buckle and the lingual. Yeah. And obviously, this is sped up just to save time by about four times. So it's look like, looking like I rushed it, and that's because I did. And then irrigate, irrigate, paper point, and finish. Notice in that previous picture you can see a soffit. This is current thinking that I don't have time to go over in this prep. Look at the very centered canal systems that you get with these X7. Watch the top right hand quadrant. So I'm just scrolling through. There's the distal root coming up. And here's the very challenging mesial root systems with the confluence about two millimeters back from the minor 
Raymond and that was coped with with ease with these uh, systems and so that's to a size 30 which should be sufficient to allow significant irrigant through that system um, and just coming back through the axial system make sure you don't leave on your model uh, big chunks of amalgam when you do a CPCT otherwise you do get these flashes you can see them in the lower section here um, I apologize for not cleaning the model there and then scrolling back up just look at the centered uh, nature of these uh, preps and really beautiful in these very curved canal systems and the final cone fit <coughs> I could have taken the cones a little bit deeper but these are prepped to size 30 in all canals um, remember a size 30 irrigation needle is about size 32 so the irrigant is going to be getting very close to your apex with these Hope you enjoyed that, and it's just a nice example of how using the PlanMaker or Amexa software with the X7 really gives you a nice case. Interesting finding when I was negotiating the mesiolingual route. Uh, here, let's just scroll through this route. Um, I found at about 12 millimeters marked there the working length I found actually my 08 hand file started to create a ledge and the ledge was just forming literally here and I hadn't noticed this impediment or what appeared to be a pulp stone in the mid root area so okay once I realized that was what we were facing I then literally came up to the axis, shaped up a little bit straighter, straight line axis without removing excessive pericervical denting in this area. And then prevent my hand file, so this is a lingual, lingual buckle, prevent the hand file towards the buckle, so coming down the lingual but bending towards the buckle, slid past that little blockage there and managed to get down to working length quite easy. Um, the uh, confluence here of the two jo the joining of the lingual and the buckle isn't too dynamic a curve so we slid down there got working length relatively easily one other uh, thing that somebody was asking me recently is is it possible to get a three-dimensional view of your access chamber or your pulp chamber absolutely this is how we do it so I'm just going to remove the working length here so you can see the working length is gone. Right, coming to the axial view here, what we're going to first do is define the four corners of the pulp chamber from the pulp horns. Right, so to do this, come over to the implant view and start mapping. So we can literally scroll through the pulp chamber here which we're going to do right up to the pulp horns. So these are the two mesial pulp horns. Distal pulp horns will be a little bit lower. Grab the root canal mapping tool and start mapping, scrolling down, sorry, down, and finding the two distal pulp horns and mapping these probably a little bit more accurately than I'm doing. And double clicking there. And if we have a look in the 3D tooth view, we can start to see exactly what I did. So that is a 3D view of the mapping of the pulp horns, mesial and distal. Let's do the pulp chamber floor. We'll just change the color of this one. I'll change it to red. Uh, and we'll do the pulp chamber floor in, <coughs> excuse me, in the default color. So come down to the pulp chamber floor. It's probably easier seen on this view up here. So let's just uh, have a look, make that a little bit larger and scroll down a little bit lower, uh, fine, scroll to the pulp chamber floor level, about here, and let's just map this out, something like this, and literally then we'll just join up the sides of the pulp chamber and so we're just going to join the vertices and uh, see what it looks like so starting from the pulp chamber floor 
and let's just do that. Um, scrolling up. So you can see the path that we're taking is actually quite convoluted. And we'll finish that line there. Could have come a little bit higher, but never mind. And we'll start going down. So here, coming down. and we'll be finished. You get much quicker at doing this uh, after you've done it a few times. That'll do, and going back down. Anyway, I'm sure you get the picture of what we're doing here. And there will be the four corners. Something like that. And so, there is our pop chamber all mapped out nicely. Not so nicely, but you get the picture here in the bottom right hand view. I'm just going to expand that to full screen and blow it up a little. Now what that allows us to do is to literally on the surface or the buckle surface of the tooth draw an outline. And we know exactly that that's going to be completely safe if you want to put measurements in there, you can just uh, go ahead and put them. I have to put them in the other view, sorry. So if I want to put measurements here, I would just grab the ruler, put measurement there to there. And that was a little bit excessive, Steve. I'll just remove that one. Do it a little bit better than that. So coming up here. And coming up here, anyway, you get the picture. And there are the measurements that I've created to the pulp horns on the distal and the mesial. Hope that helps.